We're headed to a place somewhere away from the comforts of Cagayandiero City to experience an amazing process of making fabrics out of thread spinning insects. Hi, I'm Walter. And this is Urban Wild City. Villanueva, one of the booming municipalities of Misamis Oriental. It is two towns away from Cagayan Nero City. It is also home to one domesticated larval species of the Lepidopteran order of butterflies and moths where I was given a great opportunity by the Philippine Textile Research Institute or PTRI under the umbrella of the Department of Science and Technology or DOST to do a special project about the sericulture or the silk production technology it has been operating. Before we get to the main stars of this segment, I couldn't help but noticed some of the other beautiful creatures around the institute. There's the striated grass bird and a partially hidden long-tailed shrike. Hanging out in a tree was a giant golden orb weaver. Legs included, it's almost as wide as my hand. Smaller orb weavers were also chilling around the area. I was hoping to eavesdrop the conversation of these two bugs, but to no avail. Back to the topic at hand, the institute houses a moth species called Bombyx mori, which in their larval stage produce silk as they spin their way to another phase of their life cycle. It all starts with the silk moths. The moment they are out of their cocoons, they only serve one purpose as adults, to mate. And mate they do hastily because they only get to live within 3 to 5 days, though some males get to enjoy life for a couple of days more. The reproduction activities are assisted by the silk breeders, making every moth happy. Well, except for that guy. It is also interesting to know that these moths lost the ability of sustained flight due to thousands of years of domestication. After mating, the female starts to lay eggs. It takes about 2-3 to three weeks for the eggs to hatch into larvae known as silkworms. Don't get fooled by the name silkworms because they are not true worms. They're caterpillars, technically. And they are only fed with mulberry leaves. So growing mulberry trees is also a must in sericulture. Newly hatched silkworms are so small that they are served with thin sliced leaves until they could munch a whole one. And they eat voraciously. After molting several times, the larvae then prepare to enter the pupal phase of their life cycle and enclose themselves in a cocoon made up of rose silk produced by the salivary glands. Actually, two different sets of larvae are grown at different times. One set is for cocoon production where hybrid larvae are used and pupae are euthanized through high temperature. Sadly, they don't get to enjoy the final stage of their existence as adults. The process of obtaining the silk filaments is now ready for production. Another set of larvae is for parent rearing where pupae are allowed to go to the moth stage for breeding and egg production. And so, the life cycle of the Bombix Mori continue. Well, it was an enjoyable learning experience. Never imagined I could learn firsthand how silk was made from these crawling critters. Many thanks to the people of PTRI for the chance and my crew for the extra help. Thank you for watching. See you in my next story.